Hey there everybody and welcome to part 8 of Introduction to Geometry Nodes, the only series that takes you from beginner, knowing nothing about geonodes all the way, and I love the chops, I say it every time, uh, to advanced, where anything you can think up, you can also create. Um, so far, what we've done is we've made a snowman, and make sure you watch the previous parts because they build on each other. We made a snowman, and in the last part I showed you how to animate a cube uh, to make it look like it's jumping. Now we're going to take those two things and combine them. We're going to make our snowman uh, jump over time. So it's actually going to be pretty similar to what we've been working on. So here we have our snowman node group. Uh, you can see it has the parameters from before. It's arm rotation, it's hat bobbing. I just want to uh, focus on making it move. So uh, what we did in the last tutorial is we added a transform. So again, we have a cube as an input. We have this uh, node that basically turns it all into a snowman. And then we transformed it. Um, or we're going to transform it in a way where it's going to be hopping and moving, etc. So I want to affect its translation, so I'm going to combine X, Y, Z. Again, why do we do this? It's so that we have individual control of the X, Y, and Z parameters. So I'm going to animate the X to increase over time, and the Z is going to go up and down relative to a sine wave, just like the last tutorial. So I'm going to use time as our X input, and now using a math function, Remember, we can uh, send time through any math function. I'm going to use a sign for the z-axis. So what this is going to look like, think about it. It's going to move forwards, and it's going to go up and down relative to a sine wave. Uh, but it's moving pretty slowly. So to make it move faster, I'm going to multiply my time. In other words, I'm going to accelerate it. Instead of going from 0 to 1, 0 to 60. Or in this case, 0 to 5. I'm going to make it 5 times faster. One thing I'm noticing, though, is the hops, kind of like for each hop, we're going way further than I'd expect, almost like we're on the moon. So uh, for the motion, remember, this branch over here is just X uh, movement, and this branch over here is the Z bobble. I like that. Uh, if we multiply by 0.5 or divide by 2, now it's going to move less per jump. Next issue is, remember, our sine wave goes from negative 1 to 1. And that makes it so that the snowman dips under the ground plane. Uh, we want to fix that. And we know a simple fix for this. Again, so this is literally the same node group. Uh, we are going to map range from negative 1 to 1, not to 0 to 1, because remember, our snowman is already underneath the surface. Um, but we're going to have it go from 1 to 2, so that it's at its resting state. So negative 1 to 1 to, oh. It's not connected, or it's not being viewed. Uh, so at its resting state, it goes exactly on the z-axis. Again, um, another way to do this is, I'm going back to 0 to 1, is we can take our snowman, and we can transform him, or her, or they, um, up one unit, and connect this to our thing. It's a bit more sloppy, uh, but it does the same thing, right? But I don't want to have all these transforms, so I'm going to go 1 to 2. And uh, to make our jumps a bit smoother, I'm going to set it to smoother step. So you can see it's hopping and it's loving, it's loving life. <laughs> uh, next thing I want to do is I want to add in some rotation. Again, literally the same way we did it with the cube. So I want to combine X, Y, Z on the rotation. I want to rotate it on the Y axis, just like this. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, try connecting this. Whoa, that's crazy. Uh, we need this to be relative to a sine function. So it goes in and out, in and out, in and out. And then instead of using a map range, I can just say instead of going from negative 1 to 1, because you can see it's going way over, way over, um, I'm just going to multiply it. So instead of going from negative 1 to 1, it's going to go from negative 0.1 to 0.1, which is a bit subtle. So let's do 0.2. So this is like a map range where we know we're taking this negative 1 to 1 centered at 0 and compressing it in the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, let me make it just a bit more intense. I like that. Um, the only reason to use a map range in this case for the rotation is if we want to incorporate that smoother step, uh, which I think I do actually. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1 to negative 0.25 to 0.25. But again, the difference here is we have smoother step. And that's going to make the rotation also kind of vibe with the uh, jumping motion. Um, okay, so we have this thing jumping, and we have it rotating. Uh, the last thing I wanted to add was the random rotation that I showed you before. So again, let me explain it. We use a noise texture, 
And uh, with this noise texture, we set this to one dimensional. So as we animate over time, so I'm connecting my seconds to my W input, which is basically just the seed of this. It's the uh, input to generate a random vector. I'm gonna divide this by 10, so it goes 10 times slower. Uh, this noise texture we are going to incorporate into our rotation just so we add a bit of randomness. So all I've done here is I've taken our rotation and I've added um, our random component. And you can see it's kind of changing direction each time. Now one thing that I mentioned last time that I don't think I was very clear on, noise texture, what it does is it generates a color or a vector, same thing, uh, where the X, Y, and Z components are all zero to one, right? Uh, which means on average, it's gonna be tilting a bit more this way on the X and a bit more this way on the Y and a bit more this way on the Z because it's all positive, zero to one. I want it to be centered where it can rotate this way or this way on the X axis, or it can go this way or this way on the Y. In other words, it's not biased in a certain direction. So for that, I'm gonna vector math, subtract by 0.5. This is just a common trick. And you can see this makes it centered and almost looking at the cone as the direction it's facing, you can see from the cone we've added some randomness and it doesn't look so constant anymore and it adds a bit of a life to this. Again, we can make this way stronger of a contribution by scaling this by like, let's say 10. That'll make it crazy, but you can see it can rotate like any direction pretty much. But I like this. Um, again, you can control the speed of this, make it look like it's going crazy, or kind of stabilize it out. Uh, we now have a jumping snowman, and the next step is, remember, uh, we had a cube. We made the snowman group, and now we're doing a transform. So let me actually take all of this, all of this, whoops, and put it in a frame, shift P. So this is our transform instruction. So just to be super clear, we have our group input, which is a cube, right? We applied our geonodes modifier, which means it's gonna turn into a snowman. That's the node group we made, and then we're transforming it. The transform has a very special set of rules that we made. Um, so let's actually give this a name. Uh, this can be our snowman. So you can see this is our snowman group, and this is our jumping group. So think of each node as an operation. Uh, but because this is all procedural, we can always go back, and this is what we're going to do in the next tutorial, we can always go back and add a bit of hat wobble, as you can see. Or maybe the arms can like flail around and rotate. So this is why we set it up this way, so that we can add, have some randomness here. Now I think what we're going to end up doing is kind of using sign functions or maybe some noise to animate these, we'll see in the next video. But uh, the essence of what we've done in this video is we took the lessons from the last uh, tutorial, how to animate things using time and randomness, and we applied it to our snowman. So in the next tutorial, we are going to finish up our snowman with a bit of hat bobble and a bit of hand waving. And then that will be the end of level one, tutorial zero through nine at that point, a 10 part tutorial series. That got you from knowing nothing about geonodes to making a fucking snowman that jumps around. So pat on the back to you. Uh, but first, let's finish it off with the next video.